When I was 19 years old, I took two internships over the summer in Boston. I rented a room with three other strangers. Today, I only remember one of their names, and some dude crashed on our couch for like three months without paying rent. My friends had gone home for the summer. My family was across the country in California. My then boyfriend was in New York. So outside of work, I spent most of my time alone. I'd wake up, eat my meals, shop, and clean by myself. On the weekends, I'd take my copy of The Bell Jar to the beach and fantasize about walking straight into the ocean, which is super morbid because I was depressed and afraid that the rest of my adult life would be just as isolating. I found no solitude in being by myself. Loneliness had swallowed me whole. There are few feelings more universal than loneliness. Even if you have people around, we have all, at one point or another, felt alone. And the occasional pang of loneliness? That's okay. It's a signal that maybe it's time to make a change and foster a connection. Maybe seeing a friend or volunteering would be a great way to meet new people. Maybe it's time to pick up a hobby to learn how to sit by ourselves. So, loneliness can be helpful, but when loneliness is persistent, then it becomes an epidemic. In this video, we'll discuss a book that explores loneliness and all its implications. But first… Hi, my name is Katie. I like to write, I like to read, and I've run a book club for over four years. I'm a reformed sad girl, lending to the name of this show, The Sad Girl Book Club. Despite the title, this show is for everyone, regardless of gender. I love to discuss books that I've given four or more stars to, and Kristen Radke's Seek You, A Journey Through American Loneliness is one of those books. Seek You is a great read, and luckily, we'll be able to discuss it without any spoilers. So let's get started with some context. We've all felt lonely at some point or another, but describing the feeling is difficult. For me, loneliness may be a vague sense of sadness, a restlessness where the things I do seem to lack meaning if I do them alone. But that's not necessarily helpful, so let's create a common definition for this podcast. I really like the definition put forth in the paper, Loneliness Matters. Psychologists Louise Hockley and John Cacioppo say that loneliness is a distressing feeling that accompanies the perception that a person's social needs are not being met in either quantity or quality. So basically, there's a gap between how much connection you want and how much you actually have. This feeling is prevalent all around the world, but for the context of this episode, we'll focus on the U.S. just like the book does. In 2021, 58% of U.S. adults were lonely, according to research from Morning Consult. You might think this really high statistic is just because of COVID. I mean, lockdowns completely changed how we socialize. However, loneliness was already considered an epidemic before the pandemic. Morning Consult found that 61% of adults experienced loneliness in 2019 and 54% were lonely in 2018. That's a huge percentage of people whose social needs were not being met. Research has found that this loneliness has health consequences. Some of these effects are direct. For example, prolonged loneliness can increase someone's risk for anxiety, depression, or substance abuse. However, researchers have also said loneliness may have less obvious health impacts. For example, loneliness can put people at greater risk for heart disease, cancer, stroke, hypertension, and dementia, according to the New York Times. So social isolation can take a toll on people's physical and mental health. It's in this context that Brooklyn writer and illustrator Kristen Radke released the book, Seek You. Seek You, A Journey Through American Loneliness, was released in 2021. The book is both written and illustrated by Kristen Radke. Her writings and comics appear across various publications. She's also the associate creative director of The Verge. Seek You blends personal essay and psychology into a compassionate graphic novel. In the book, Radke discusses the history of loneliness, including the invention of the laugh track, the impact of social media, and the dawn of professional cuddling. 
That's exactly what it sounds like, by the way. People who you pay just for cuddles. Radke also shares essential psychological studies that have shaped how we view the need for connection. In between the statistics and historical examples, Radke offers a lens through which we can see loneliness at play in the modern world. She discusses instances from her own life where she was lonely. That includes late nights on internet chat rooms as a teen, or the ennui of being in a new city where you know no one. She also presents the challenge of loneliness in our world today. That includes how loneliness is discussed in the context of gender, art, and violence. Radke's book approaches loneliness with empathy. She shares both the facts and gives words to her own experiences, creating a sense of universality. A challenging topic like loneliness should be handled with insightful gentleness, and Radke knocks it out of the park. So what makes Seek You worth the read? I really enjoyed this book, and I gave it a strong 5 out of 5. So let's take a minute to give the graphic novel its laurels in a brief numbered list. So here are four things that I think make Seek You worth the read. Number one, Seek You is well-researched. Seek You readers will automatically tell how much care has gone into researching this book. Radke has read psychological studies, She's conducted interviews with experts. She's gathered the anecdotal experiences of other ordinary people. The amount of research makes the book feel comprehensive. If you've never read an article about loneliness, this is a great starting point for the history and psychology of the emotion. For those who have taken psych classes, this will offer a great refresher. Not only is CQ researched, it's written in a way that's accessible. You don't need an academic background to find value in the book, which makes it great for any reader. Number two, the author's anecdotes give the book a human element. I love personal writing, personal essays, and graphic memoirs. Radke takes elements of all of these disciplines, weaving them into her book. Academic papers deal with everything scientifically. Radke's stories give CQ a human touch. This leads seamlessly into the next point. Number three, CQ is written with compassion. It's really easy to distance ourselves from topics like loneliness. Oh, I'm better than those people who post selfies for validation. Or I might get lonely, but I'd never pay for a professional cuddler. Radke addresses these topics non-judgmentally. She has empathy for people who experience the most extreme forms of loneliness, like the elderly or teens. This compassion makes the subject matter feel even more important. Loneliness is something that affects us all. Connection is only something we can find together. The empathy and compassion through the comic gives Seek You hope. That's essential when tackling these big societal phenomena. Number four, the art is beautiful. You can't discuss CQ without talking about the art. And in short, it's great. Radke is such a talented illustrator and her skill shines through in the book. I mean, just look at it. I'm obsessed with it. More specifically, Radke artfully represents abstract concepts associated with loneliness. For example, Radke discusses what loneliness feels like and how our brain processes the emotion. You can't literally draw loneliness, so instead she shows different people falling into the sea. This is a visual metaphor we can all understand. Radke has amazing zoomed out images of cityscapes and people. You get a sense of isolation and how small it feels to be lonely. My absolutely favorite part of the book is the use of color. The color palette is limited. Each section of the book may be in all blue or purple or orange. Sometimes a secondary color will be used to draw your attention to a certain scene or create a certain feeling. Just take a look at the cover. Warm oranges and yellows draw the eye to separated individuals isolated in their homes. The art enhances the message. As a comic lover, you can't ask for anything more. So how do we find meaning in loneliness? In 1978, three psychologists at UCLA developed a scale for measuring loneliness. The scale consists of 20 statements. For example, the first question says, I am unhappy doing so many things alone. You can say you often, sometimes, 
rarely or never feel this way. Each response has a point value. At the end, you total up points and score your results. You can fall somewhere between 0 and 60. It's reverse coded, meaning the higher you score, the lonelier you are. I took the test and scored an 8. At other points in my life, I would have scored higher. This test takes the feeling of loneliness and gives it a value, which can have benefits in a clinical context. But as a person, what do you do with that information? What exactly does it mean? Finding meaning in loneliness is one of the major themes in Radke's book. It's not just about showing that loneliness exists. The book focuses on its implications and how it impacts the world that we live in. And much like the scoring system devised by UCLA, how to act upon loneliness also falls on a scale. So here's what I've come up with. Instead of going with a numerical value, I'm going to give loneliness spice values. You know, like hot sauce or salsa. So mild loneliness. Think of this as a passing melancholy. This loneliness is much more superficial, simply a desire to be around people. Mild loneliness is also much easier to fix. Maybe going to a coffee shop or a park and seeing other humans will do the trick. Then we have medium loneliness. This would be the desire not just to be around other people, but to be in community with them. This might involve calling a friend or joining a walking group. Talking and forming longer-lasting connections can help quell this lonely feeling. And then we have spicy loneliness. This is the type of isolation that is prolonged or persistent. It breeds a deeper sadness or sometimes bitterness. Think about moving to a new city where you have to start over, or what it feels like after a spouse or a friend has passed. Spicy loneliness requires deeper change and takes time to yield results. So maybe it's going to therapy to learn how to be alone, or it's starting down the long path of building new relationships. This was a long way of saying CQ provides the context for loneliness. The book also demonstrates a longing for closeness. As a reader, you're left to seek your own scales and solutions. You're left to decide what to do with this information. You choose where you fall on the scale, what meaning you prescribe to loneliness, and what to do when the isolation creeps in. Radke began researching this book in 2016. Seek You was ultimately published in 2021, meaning the majority of the research, writing, and art of the book was completed before the COVID-19 pandemic. The only parts that reference the pandemic directly are an introduction acknowledging how widespread isolation has become. The book also predates TikTok and aesthetic culture, which has added to the social media paradox of being connected yet feeling alone. This is all to say that the book is both prescient and even more relevant today than at its inception. I'd highly recommend this book if you love comics, personal essays, psychology, or if you're just looking for a really quick read. Outside of that, we've all felt lonely. This book does a great job of giving extra context for those feelings. And in a world where connection sometimes feels too far away, a book like this has extra value. And that's all I have for today. Thanks for joining me. Until next time. Bye.